Awesome. Uh, and this is in, from Kathy. This is Patsy Caminetti. Um. Wrote an article about prayer for the rain, and it it's um it's really, it's good. Uh, she says any promise of God needs someone to hold on to that promise. Wow. Because prayer without a promise has no grounding, and there will be no fruit to your prayer. I had to read this a few times. Um, so on the other hand, a promise without prayer has no purpose. Promises are activated by believing prayer. So the promises in the Word of God, unless we um, take those promises and have believing prayer, then they really aren't, they're not fruitful. Yeah. Right? So any promise of God needs someone to hold on to that promise. So we're holding on to the promises of God. And prayer without a promise has no grounding and there won't be any fruit from that promise. Promises have been put in the word for the purpose of holding fast to them. Yes. He put them in there for us to hold to on. And prayer is one of the primary ways to which we do this. So we pray the promises. And that's what we've been being taught what we're, we're learning to do, right, is to pray the promises yes, yes. that are in yeah. the word. Um, because as it says, without a promise, prayer has no purpose. Mm -hmm. So, um, promises are prayer tr tools. Yes. And I never sort of looked at them like yeah. that before. Mm -hmm. But promises are prayer tools. You never, ever let go of them. Because if God mm -hmm. promised them, That's right. it will surely come to pass. That's right. God gave Elijah a promise, and as we know, that man held on to that promise mm -hmm. um, until he saw the answer. Mm -hmm. Even when he didn't, he didn't even need a huge indication of what that promise had come forth. Right? Mm -hmm. He just—it was a, a the cloud the size of a man's hand, yes. and he started running to get out <laughs> of the rain. Right? Yes. So he held on to that promise. And we know he held on to that promise because he prayed for three and a half years. Um, he had prayed that the rain would cease, right? Mm -hmm. So for three and a half years, there was no rain. Right. And then he prayed. Mm -hmm. And then there was rain. <coughs> In James 5, 7 and 8, it says, mm -hmm. Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and the latter rain. And then in verse 8, it says, Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord. Draws 9. <coughs> James exhorts us to be patient for the coming of the Lord. And then there can be an analogy written between the husbandman or the farmer waiting for the harvest. <coughs> And the Lord God of the harvest waiting for the latter for the last day's harvest of souls. So um, she says in Matthew nine thirty eight, um, there is it talks about I can't go there. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, and he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Yeah. Yeah. So she she's given a analogy between the farmer waiting for his harvest for the, the rains that have come and have, have watered the land <coughs> and then the water, the latter rains and the, those rains coming and the, and the Lord of the harvest waiting for the harvest of souls. The early and latter rains mentioned are the spring and summer rains mm -hmm. and they brought the crops to ripeness. <coughs> and just as you plant a garden, you know that if you don't have rain, then things don't grow. Right. Or they do. We haven't had enough rain this year. Last year there was too much rain. This year there's not enough rain, and we haven't really used the water that we have in the things. But our cucumbers are growing fat and mm -hmm. short. They're not growing out oh, the length that. So we need the rains, and we need just the right <coughs> amount of rains, right? So. Um, to bring the crops to ripeness. In the same way, the rain of God's Spirit falling on the field of human souls causes these souls to be ready. So they mm -hmm. need the rains as well yeah. to be ready for the harvest. Mm -hmm. 
It is this harvest for which the coming of the Lord is patiently waiting. Then a few uh, verses later in James 5, it talks about, um, there's an example to pray for the reign of God's spirit. Mm -hmm. It says, the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Elijah was a man just like a nature of ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain in the land for three and a half years. He prayed again, <coughs> and the heavens gave forth rain, and the earth produced its fruit. He was human just as we were, or are. And for three and a half years, he kept his prayers um, going that the rain would not fall. But when he did finally pray fervently for the rain, it fell, and the skies opened up and made the crops grow. So she said, let's look at the Bible and see what it says concerning the reign of God's spirit. Mm -hmm. And she said, here's some important aspects to consider. So what is the reign? When we talk <coughs> about the reign of God's spirit, Hosea 6.3 says, he comes as the reign. Mm -hmm. God's very presence is the reign that we are asking for. Right. How does the rain fall? Talking about um, natural rain, mm -hmm. uh, there's dew, there's rain, there's snow, mm -hmm. any kind of precipitation, and it comes in various uh, degrees of intensity. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it rains lightly, yeah. sometimes it rains moderately, sometimes it rains heavily. So there are different degrees. God's presence can fall in different ways and different measures, so he just doesn't fall in one one, one way. The rain falls over areas of the earth on both the just and the unjust. That's the scripture found in Matthew 5.45. And it's his presence alone which refreshes and revives the just, right? So he revives, his presence revives us and refreshes us. And just as for the unjust, he prepares them for the harvest. Although there was a promise for rain, Elijah had to pray. He, he knew that there was a promise, right. but he still had to pray. <coughs> and uh, Zechariah 10, 1 says, ask for the rain in the time of the latter rain. So we still have to pray for the rain. Even though we have a promise of an outpouring of God's spirit, even though it's the right time, we still have to ask. Mm -hmm. And he was persistent in his prayer for the rain. When fervent, persistent prayers are made for a specific harvest field, um, such as youth, our governments, our nations, um, business people, those prayers function as evaporation. And I found this interesting. I never thought of it in this light before. So those prayers accumulate over that field that you're praying for. Whether you're praying for a nation, you're praying for your family, you're praying for youth. <coughs> so those prayers, um, they accumulate over that field as like a cloud. Mm -hmm. And when that cloud reach, reaches the point of saturation, oh. it'll turn into precipitation. Oh. Wow. So it's a, it's a progress. Like, yeah. Yeah. So evaporate is an evaporation. So as we pray for say, our church. Yeah. Those prayers, consistently praying, they, uh, they, they're they like a cloud. Mm -hmm. And when we reach a certain point, when that <coughs> cloud becomes so just like mm -hmm. um, when, we, when we have rain, right? <sighs> the rain falls and it, it goes back up and it comes back down right. again. So as we pray and um, mm -hmm. it reaches a certain point, wow. then that it's it bring it uh, becomes precipitation. Mm -hmm. The rain of God's presence will fall on that field and do just what James 5:18 says. It will cause it to be ready for harvest. Mm -hmm. You can see why Elijah's example of praying for rain is extremely important in preparing the way for Jesus' mm -hmm. return. The rain is necessary to prepare the people of God as well as the harvest of souls for what he's patiently waiting for. Mm -hmm. Let us as people who have been made righteous 
pray earnest, heartfelt, 